okay so what we are discussing is here operational modes here okay in the operational mode concept so normally what is the operational mode operational mode means converting dialog work process to btc work process btc work process to dialog are called the operational modes right why we have to convert it why we have to convert the this one so why we have to convert means suppose few customers they don't have enough memory to increase the dialog work process to increase the btc work process they don't have enough memory so in this case what they have to do online they can change it they can change the from btc to dialog dialog to btc we can change it without system downtime without system downtime we can change the so values of the uh, dialog work process and btc work process values we can increase it or decrease it so what the transaction codes which we have to use is for the these are the transaction codes we have to use it rz03 04 and sm63 these are the four tra three transaction codes we have to use it for the operational modes for operational modes we have to use these three transaction codes we have to use it okay so normally day time normally the business scenario like normally any business scenario any business day time they need day time means peak time we will call it as the peak time so we need more dialog work process why because day time more users they will log in they will do the transactions right so that time we don't need during the day time we don't need more btc work process so whatever the work process we have we can just convert those work process to btc work process to dialog dialog mode why because peak time peak time we need more dialog work process so we can convert btc to dialog we can convert it right so that is the so day time so night time during the night time we don't need night time we don't need that is called the non peak time non peak time means that time there is no business that time all jobs will execute so if you observe most of the salaries will come most of the jobs will come so most of the things will come during the night time only why because during the night time jobs during the night time what happens jobs during the night time jobs will execute it why because that time no users so that time so we don't need more dialog work process so that time we need more btc work process so we can convert we can convert existing existing dialog work process to to btc we can convert it right you no need to increase it if you want to increase it permanently then definitely you need to restart the system here we don't have any approval to restart the system so with system online only we have to change it so we have to use the so so this transaction codes for the operational modes we have to use this transaction codes for the operational modes we have to use this one okay these are the transaction codes we have to use it so what is mean by operational mode means simple it's a very very simple operational mode answer switching from dialog to btc or btc to dialog is called the operational modes right so rz0304 for creation of the uh, modes operational modes and everything 63 is for the timelines assigning timelines assigning we have to assign the timelines for the sm63 okay these are the three so only few customers they are using why because uh, the, 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 the customer who don't have the memory enough memory cpus they can go with the this operational modes but nowadays no one using only few customers they are using this operational modes concept but we should aware of this concept as well small concept this is a small concept for converting from dialog to btc or btc to dialog is called the operational modes so in this case we have to so we have to log in to the our system we have to log in to the our system any any client you can use it to log in okay any client you can use to log in
okay so we have to go to the rz03 rz03 for the for creation of the operational modes for creation of the operational modes we have to use this this one operational modes we have to use it for creation of the operational modes go to configure here we have just to click on the go to configure just click on the to create operational modes so operational mode name okay so day time day time means peak time okay peak time so just to just you can create the operational modes concept day time and peak time just go to the instance profile just click on the create button what is the host name here so go to this one is just a small confusing part okay that's why just you can remember we can also windows you have to fill all these details system instance number is zero zero profile okay first of all we have to import the profiles right this is a new system so we do, new system we don't have any profile so we have to import for a new system go to the utilities import profiles from off active servers so we have to use this button for importing the profiles from operating system level like from sys the sys profile to from rz10 and rz11 we have to get this profiles right so for this one after installation we discussed the installation post we have to import the this profiles so this is a new system ecq is our new system right so no one like so we are not done anything here in the ecq system just we installed it so ecq is our main system there we have created so that so here we can see so we are just importing the profiles all the profiles are importing and it's compiling even if we have not performed any sgen as well right so that's why you can see it is taking time importing the profiles from OS level sys direct sys profile to OS level we have the one profile you will think you are aware of right sys profile so you OS level we have sys profile so these profiles we have so instance profile ACS profile and a default profile so these profiles will be imported into the SAP level these profiles will be imported into the so SAP level it will be imported It is taking time you can see here why because we have not done any sgen after the execution that's why it's taking time so meanwhile i will connect to the ecp 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 we have the fast sap windows instance number 11 i guess yes ecp is our production system okay see here how fast we got that response here okay rz03 rz03 no profiles for the operational modes here we do have not created any profiles and operational modes okay so go to the rz04 i think someone already tried i think daytime they have created and nighttime they have created so like that so someone already created now if you choose it immediately we got the so responses right we got the responses so host name sap windows is our host name so click on the save button save button okay save button so this is for some type of tricky concept this operational mode concept okay so but the procedure wise the definition wise it's a very simple converting dialogue or process to btc work process here total three are there so which mode you need to select it suppose day mode okay day time so during the day time so here we have 
exactly currently we have dialogue work process are the seven work process, right? Background are the three work process. During the daytime, what we need is we need age, we need weight. So suppose like we need so two two background work process. We need so age. So bit age dialogue work process. We can convert it. That settings we can do that one here, right? That setting we can do that one. Previously we have seven and three existing scenario. But what I changed it eight and two. Eight and two I have changed it. Just click on the save button. Okay. So just click on that. Now now night time. So night time during the night time. Okay. During the night time we need we need less dialogue work process. Why? Because night time no users will log in. But the Allah Allah all the jobs will run it. So we need more background work process. That's why I changed it here. That's why I changed it 7 3 here. 7 3 here. So 7 3 here, I changed it. You can see here work process distribution, right? You can see daytime. Daytime, daytime means now. So timelines also we have to set it out. Daytime, 8 dialogue work process and 2 BTC work process. That is night time 3 7. Like that. We have set the so operational modes like that. We have set the we have allocated the work process here. Just click on the save button. The work process instance data as saved, right? We have set the work process. So now go to SM63 for changing the timelines for changing the timelines. So night time means from what time to what time? So from suppose morning time. Morning time peak hours means we have whenever is the peak hours we have. Normally, business hour starts from so right. Business hours start from nine o'clock, right? Normally, if we talk about the so nine to six, seven. So nine to six is our major business hour. So what we have to do? We have to assign the operational modes. We have to assign the operational modes here. We have to assign the operation timeline. That operational modes we have to assign it here. That assign it we have to assign the that operational modes here. Daytime, daytime. This is the major guy, daytime. So we have to assign it here. From six to from six to again early morning, night o'clock. That is the night time, right? Night time we have to assign it. Night mode. So night mode I have assigned it here, right? Night mode we have assigned it here. So daytime. When is the daytime? Morning 9 to 6 time, that is the peak hour. So, daytime. After 6 to again, morning 9 o'clock, it's a night mode, which means less dialogue. During the daytime, we have so more dialogue process, less BTC process. During the night time, from what is the timeline? Here, here to here. So, we can set the more dialogue. So, now we are in the night mode. Night mode means uh, dialogues are less. BTCs are more. Now we are in the this one. See here, this is the arrow. Just click on the save button. Save button. Just go back. Go back and see the timelines here. It will change it now. It will. It should change it now. So let's see now. Let's see now. So active. So let's see whether it's configured or not. We can see now. Go to the SM50. In SM50, if you go it here, in SM50, if you go here, so night night time. Night time means we have so night time means we need more background work process, right? Background work process are more now. So dialogues are very less. Still, it is not switched. The dial uh, work process still it is not switched. Still, it is not switched. The so this uh, <coughs> operational modes are not switched. So now so it will be automatic, but we can go hit here. There is a switch operation modes to switch the all servers to the night mode. Yes, perform the switch anyway. Okay, so operational modes are switched now. Now, if you go to the SM50. It will be change it. It will change it. It will be in the processing. It will change all the operational modes to so dialog to BTC, BTC to dialog. We can you it will change it automatically. You no need to restart the system as well. Automatically, you can change it. You can also check the locks here. 
you can also check the locks here operational modes locks see here operational mode a switch to operational mode night is triggered 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 means so night mode it is triggered night mode it is triggered which means night mode it is triggered so which means so now everything will be changed da to btc btc to dialog it will be changed all will be changed now so you have to wait for few minutes it will be changed it will be converted okay this is the way we have to change our dialog to btc btc to dialog we have to change our operational modes and everything we have to change it we have to change it right so this is the so concept of the operational modes it's small concept but the configuration side only it's a very more that's why no one will prefer this option operational mode concept so normally if they want permanently they will change it otherwise otherwise so they will use the, this operational mode concept they will use it okay operational mode concept you can see it the locks and all you can see it from here sm 29 we go to the 29 what exactly happening with the, my system everything you can see here operational mode is triggered here as part of the operational mode switching is triggered so which means switch to night shift is triggered which means so dialogs are less uh, rz03 dialogs are less btc are more why because now night mode is triggered so in the night mode is triggered in sm63 if you go to the change button now night mode is triggered which means so in the night mode what we have in the night mode so if you go to the sm sorry rz04 rz04 then the daytime so if you see here so night mode three night mode three uh, dialogs and seven btc process so this will be triggered this will be triggered okay this will happen in the system here this will happen in the system okay so this will happen like that if you want to change it in all our process all the instances you have to change it all the application servers you have to change this one all application servers you have to change this one okay so this is the modes concept operational mode concept we have to change it it's a small topic so they will ask you the critical they will ask you what is mean by operational modes switching the dialog to background background to dialog is called the operational mode so when you need more night so during the daytime we need more dialog process so existing btc process we can convert to the dialog process Maybe because during the day mode we don't need more btc process so the existing btc process we can convert to the dialog mode we can use it right existing one night mode we don't need more dialog process so few we required remaining we can convert from the so dialog to btc work process so how many we have to convert it means it's organizational policy your company policy how much you want to change it you can change it otherwise you can ignore it okay this is about the operational modes concept okay so with this we have small topic this is a very small topic just you can remember the two sentences only these two we can remember okay these two sentences you can remember during the entire point of time you can remember these two sentences so apart from that so what we have discussed about the smicm and sicf right communication so for activation of the services and checking the icm port numbers and everything this is very important so in the smicm we go to the we already discussed once again i am i am repeating okay so in the smicm you can see here so here we need to check the our icm icm communication service is active or not we need to check it out here the service also should be active the http port smtp port https port should be active status here we don't have any port so that's why if you open any url it won't connect to the our sap system why because the port is 000 and also here everything is active status so which means it's active but there is no port is allocated to us so if you go to the here if you go to the here go to the status and trace file trace file just 
this kind of display all here you can see here here all the logs will be generated all the logs will be generated you can see latest timestamp log files it will we will get the some errors if anything like oh, http http service are defined something like that we have something like that. so these are the http http communication purpose here we will use it so for smtp smtp is for the scott transaction smtp service for mail service mailbox service we have to define the one port number we have to define it so that port should be also should be active normally some people they will activate 25 or 2500 like that they will activate it so smtp also required so smtp also required this is what we have to check the and the smicm logs the service should be active like that we have to check it out so if i talk about the scott transaction code scott is for the mailbox configurations mail server configuration and everything here here the node should be active the node should be active status here the node should be active in use means it should be active and so the port we have there's a default port actually and also if you go to the set command here here we have to use we have to use either star or we have to you you have to define the email addresses otherwise the recipients should not get the emails you have to define their email address or star dot something they, they we are getting to dm gmail.com just gmail id should be required here okay gmail id should be required here so why this configuration is required so some users they need emails from sap to their mailboxes they need emails so suppose one job is completed some purchase order completed they they should get the emails so that time this card smtp configuration we have to perform it it should be active status and also here we need to define the our email id is if you put the star if you put the star we will get the these things we put the star we will get the so all these things we will get it out from here right the scott so it example scheme scott here the job should be active one send job should be active here so the send job should be active here the send job should be for the send job is for the like this one sap connect job so what this job will do whatever the emails trigger this job will send to the, the respective email addresses you want to only internet or if you put the star all either internet emails fax emails some office emails everything triggered everything will be moved everything will be triggered everything will be triggered so every 10 minutes this is running now see here now i schedule it so now the job is triggered sap connect the job all send so sometimes it's not all send sometimes it should be so they, they won't send to the all they will send to the internet some fax or internet they will send it which means which means so it will send only fax related emails it will send it out not the internet emails so this configuration should be exist here some smtp configuration and send jobs related configuration should be exist here right send jobs job should be active here and smtp configuration both should be this two two should be we have to configure in order to get the emails from the sap so now we can go to the sost there we can monitor there we can monitor the here all the emails and everything we can monitor it here whether the, any emails are stuck or not we can monitor it so we can just change the timelines here just to refresh so here we can monitor the all the emails and everything we can monitor it so if anything generated if anything got stuck we can shake it here now try to generate the one email here okay go to the new business workplace don't have authorization to send the email to address contact them. So some authorization issue. So some authorization issue. So that's why we are unable to send it, send it. Okay, 
So like that, so we, if you send it from here, SAP Business Workplace, the emails get stuck here. The emails get, we can see here, that there's a, how many emails are sent, how many are sent, how many are waiting, how many are error, we will get the so entire list here. So based on that, we can find out what is the error. So if the send job, if the SAP send job and, and the node is active, definitely the emails will process. The emails will process. If the send job is not active or if the, even though it is active, but here something like they have said not to send to the all, send to the only respective address only, that time also we may face the issues. So here we need to check it out clearly. So what is the, if the job is active or not? So like this, we need to check the our job is jobs are active or not. This job is very important. Sometimes they may ask you questions like, so the all the emails got stuck in the SOST transaction code. What could be the possible reasons? So we can say like SMTP port node is not active, email address are not configured. Then finally, this job SAP connect job. SAP send job, SAP connect job is not active, is not running because of this reason. You are not getting the you are not getting the emails from the SAP. So this SMTP node should be green status and uh, send job should be configured. Then only you will get the emails from the SAP, right? So then you can observe it. All these things you can observe it. I think there is a one dump is generated. Dump is generated. So you can also check the, whether the dumps are generating operational modes, all these things, all these things you can monitor it, all these things you can monitor it. So all these things you can check it out from here SAP. Okay. So this is the way we can use it. So this is about the small concept operational modes. So and also just to SMICM, some SICF for activation of the services and everything. If you want to use any service, you can go to the SACF and activations and uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, one more thing I want to just explain. How to add the transport request into buffer, right? How to add, how to add the TR into buffer, import buffer. So normally if the TR is configured, if the, if the, if the TR is configured. If you go to the STMS here, so STMS, you go to the STMS. If the routes are configured, development to quality, quality to uh, production, the routes, the layers, everything is configured. So you don't need to manually adding is not required. Manually adding the transport request is not required here. Manually adding the transport request is not required here. Okay. So manually adding the so request is not required. Only if the system is not in the, this transport landscape, that is in the different landscape, or some issues with the, your transport directory, that time, that time we have to, so we have to add it manually, we have to add it. So manually we have to add it. So how to do this one? How to do this one? Go to the, go to the STMS transaction code, so select the select the trans, go select the system which system you want to import it select it right just select it which system you want to import it okay suppose there is a transport request you have to add it to the buffer suppose this is the transport request example transport request go to the extras other request add it all other additional transport request so you need to just to put the transport request number system it will be and import the request again just click on it just yes that will be added to the your transport request that will be added to the here right you can respect to target system that will be added okay that will be added to the transport request see that is added here so you can add the same transport request to the ecp as well also you can add it 
So same transport request you can add it to the ECP as well. Go to the extras. How to add it means go to the extras other request add it. Extras other request you can add it. Okay. So like that we can add the transport. Why? Because all the all are having the same trans directory. So that we can add it. All these requests we can add it. So these are the NWD transport requests. All are moved to the to ECP system. So we can add, we can also move this transport request to the forward, this transport request to the, so we have ECQ system, right? ECQ, ECQ system, we can forward it. We can also forward this one, right? See, it is getting forwarded. So like that, vice versa, we can move or we can change whatever you want, you can do that one, okay? It is moving, see, transport request is forwarded to the ECQ system. This, this requests are created from NWD. Previously, previous batches, we have used the NWD system. We don't have NWD now. So we have created and we have moved to the ECP system that time. Now, we have same transport request we are using. We are moving to the, so some other systems like that is called the ECP, ECQ systems we have moved. Now go back here, go to the ECQ. Now you can see NWD is there. Now we can import the transport request. So which client do you want to import? Just you can select it. Go to the operational modes, select the options. Okay, we can import it. We can just get click on the import button. That is what we discussed, right? It is getting imported. See here, it is getting imported. See here, it is getting imported. It's imported. Written code is zero, which means successfully it is imported. Like that, we can import the transport request from so one system to other system, other system to this system, from anywhere to anywhere. We can import the transport request. Okay, so how to add means. Just to go to the here, just to go to the extras, other request add it. Extras, other request add it. Okay, this is the request for adding that one. So before adding, there should be a profiles, data files should be exist. Profiles and the data files should be exist. Otherwise, what happens? You won't get the transport request. Definitely, if you are moving the from NWD transport, that related profiles and data files should be exist under the trans directory. Otherwise, the transport request will not be moved. Transport request will not be moved. Suppose this is the triple zero forty transport request number, right? Suppose if I go here, here, where is the forty? This is the forty transport request. I deleted the data file and I deleted the profiles. Both I deleted it. Now I'm, I'm trying to import this one. I'm trying to import this one. Let's see what happens. So it's not, so it's not, see here, there is no transaction, no import steps are performed, no import steps are performed. So just we can try to again import it. But there is there are no profiles and data files, there are no Profiles and data files. Normally, we should get the error. Normally, we should get the errors. There are no profiles and data files normally. We should get the errors. So here, why? Because we have removed it. So it's in the unknown status. Now it should be in the different status, unknown status. So why? Because we removed the profiles and data files. We removed it. So profiles and data files are very important. So when the profiles and data files will be created, means when the TR is released from the source, that time all the profiles and data files will be created here. That time all the profiles and data files will be created in the, the trans directory. Trans directory that will be created. Okay. So this is the small uh, topic like just to want to just to add some points actually, some important points. So we have other topics like. So yeah. Yes, note implementation we have to discuss. Then SAP patching activities. So these are the very big activities. S note is very calm, small. Yes, note SAP note SAP note. Yes, note transaction code. We will use it. So what is this note? What is this note? So whenever in our system, suppose if you go in our system. Suppose if we go some dumps, you see some dumps are occurred today, some raise exceptions, 
import container is missing. We got some raise exception errors, some foreground error, some syntax error, some timeout error, some conditions related errors. We got dumps. To fix these dumps, SAP they will this SAP they will release the, some correction notes. Some correction notes. Notes means they will release it. The solution SAP will provide to us. Solution SAP will provide to us that solution. That solution SAP will provide to us. So if you go and here, if you search it, suppose I got the this raise action action. If you go to search in the SAP, we will get the some notes. Some notes we will get it out, right? Some notes we will get it out. Go to the here, we will get the some clues. Okay, this is the note number. If I execute here, I got the note. I got the this note. This note we have to apply in the SAP system. Then only we will fix the this raise exception error dumps. We will fix it out. We have to apply these notes, right? All NetWeaver versions we have to apply this note. We have to apply this note. We have to apply it here. Just click on this button. So then in the SAP level, so it will be authenticate. Then see here what is this note? This note we have to apply the error message. So normally you see the runtime errors like raise exception dump. This dump category above program raise exceptions. So normally the component is the header dump is misleading. So resolution, what you have to do. So this information we terminated. So you go to the same font, code extract, termination points. Then so contact the who is responsible for functional model. So what do you have to do? The steps, the steps they have mentioned, the steps they have mentioned. So in the notes, we have the two types actually. One is the informative note, corrective note. Informative note means the SAP will provide the solution, resolution steps. The step number one, you have to check this one. Step number two, you have to check this one. Step number three, this one. Step number four, this one. Then your instant will be fixed, right? Like that, your instant will be fixed. Some notes, that note we have to directly apply into the SAP system. That is the corrective note. You have to come to the here in SAP system, yes note transaction code, then go to the SA note, just click on the download that note in the SAP itself, then implement it. Directly we can implement that note to fix that functional model issue, that, that, that directly we can implement it. That is the corrective note. So two types of notes. One is the information note. So it will give the resolution, information. So which steps you have to perform to fix the issue. Some notes, we can directly go to the here SAP level, go to the yes note transaction code for the note apply. Yes note transaction code for the note apply. Yes note, this is also a small topic. Yes note for the note apply. So yes note transaction code for the note apply, we have to use it. So go to the here, just click on the uh, download the note. We can apply the notes to the here. Then those notes, we can apply it here, okay? Here, SAP backbone connectivity is required. That I will explain it in the next class. So, it's also a small topic. Notes we have to apply it from here. Okay. Using the yes note transaction. How to apply the notes means yes note. And a transaction code we have to use it. So, in which cases we have to apply any dumps, any errors, any. So, SAP system means normally. So, it's a combination of the all the above programs and everything. Suppose if any issues with the above program, code, any dump, timeout value, syntax error. So normally SAP will provide the resolution to us. So why? Because they have provided the software to us. So we are using it. So they are the responsible for this dumps, bugs and everything. So if any bug, so, so, so one or two bugs and small bugs, we can apply the notes. Yes, note we can apply. If the number of bugs are there, then we can apply the patch we can apply the patch. One patch equals to number of SAP nodes, collection of combination of the massive nodes. So that is the patch you have to apply. It. So one or two nodes, three nodes, four nodes, five nodes, small box. We can fix it using the note apply. As note, we can apply it. So collection of nodes are called the patch that we have to apply. It. Okay, that we will come. More to come on the, in the tomorrow's class. In the Monday class, more to come. So don't miss why because we are going to discuss about the SAP upgrade concept. That's the very important concept. SAP upgrade, how we are doing the upgrades and everything, we will get it out. This is the so very big topic in SAP. Once this is completed, 
we will discuss in the SAP HANA. It's a very important concept. Then HANA completed. Then we have the revision topics, revisions. Then interview point of time. Interview point of time, we will revise all these things. It's a very important. Okay. HANA, we have revision this one. So, okay. We have to speed up our classes as well. Okay. So, yeah. We'll discuss about the SAP upgrades, HANA administration, revisions, and interview point of time. We have to discuss. Okay. So please join the classes on time. So don't miss. I think we have don't have any festivals as well. So 